Today we will discuss what do you mean by tangent lines, rate of change and the derivative. I hope all of you remember what you have studied till last class or you learn well whatever you have studied in the last, up to last class. Also I hope you remember given to uh, given a line uh, you know and uh, two points on a line you know what is the equation of the line passing through these two lines. Okay now you have a graph given in the left side y equal to f of x with the two points p c f of c and q x f of x. The line passing through p and q we call it is a secant line. You see it is a secant line. Okay. The line lp which touches the curve at p c f of c we call it is a tangent line to the curve at a point p c f of c. Okay. <clears throat> now remember that if q e h uh, now we assume, if we assume q to be a point which is very near to the point p c f of c then I can always write x to be equal to c plus h. Okay, now if h is greater than 0 then we can see that the q lies to the right of the point p and h is less than 0 then q lies to the left of p. Mm. You can always see that um, whether, whether it is right or left we have no problem. So we will assume h is greater than 0. Okay, when x is c plus h, the corresponding y coordinate of q is f of c plus h. So we can always write q is as a point q c plus h f of c plus h. Okay, now we can approach if I ask, let us see what happens if I assume that h tends to 0, then what happens this the point q will approach the point p along the graph of curve along the graph of f. Yeah, that is what in this figure says. You see. Now every time as I told you, you, you know what is the equation of a line which passes through two points. Now suppose that you have given a two points on a straight line, then you know what is the uh, slope of that line. Now P A F of A and Q A plus H F of A plus H is two points on the line, then its tangent is nothing but, not, not tangent, its slope is nothing but M sec is equal to Y difference divided by X difference, that is F of A plus H minus F of A divided by a plus h minus a or f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h. This equation expression that is f of a plus h minus f of a by h is called difference quotient. Now you see this graph as h approaches to 0 q approaches p and every time the secant line passing through p and q ultimately becomes the tangent line t. Okay, so if the tangent line does exist at p, then it is slope m tan should be the limit of m sec obtained by letting, letting h approaches to 0. You remember what do you mean by m sec? m sec is nothing but f of a plus h, uh, f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h. Limit tends to, h tends to 0 means limit h tends to 0, f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h. That is the, uh, what do you mean by m tan? That is what definition is given. If p a f of a be a point on the graph of a function f, then the tangent line at p, if it exists, we don't know whether it exists or not, if it exists on the graph of f is the line passing through p and having slope m tan is equal to limit h tends to 0 f of a plus h minus f of a by h. If the limit of the equation does not exist, then m tan is undefined. So we say that limit is not defined. Thus, if the tangent line does exist at p, then the slope m tan should be the limit of m sec obtained by letting h approaches to 0. If the limit in equation 2 exists, then we can find an equation of the tangent line at p by using point slope 4 of an equation of a line. We already know that p a f of a is the point and m tan is the slope, then the equation of the line is nothing but y minus f of a equal m tan into x minus a. We have two definitions. The average rate of change of a function f over the interval a a plus h is f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h. Second, in, second is instantaneous rate of change of a function. The instantaneous rate of change of a function f with respect to x at a is limit h tends to 0 f of a plus h minus f of a by h if the limit exists. The derivative of a function 
f with respect to x is the function f dash defined by the rule f dash of x equal to limit h tends to 0 f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Already we have discussed that. Okay, what do you mean? You, you have some uh, insight. What do you mean by limit h tends to 0 f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h? You remember that. We just discussed that. We will discuss in much more into that. The domain of f dash consists of all values of x for which the limit exists. We have these two interpretations, geometric interpretation. Geometric interpretation is nothing but the derivative f dash of a point is a measure of the slope of the tangent line to the graph of f at any point x f of x provided that the derivative exists. The other one is physical interpretation. What do you mean by that? It is nothing but instantaneous rate of change of f at x. The process of finding the derivative of a function is called the differentiation. We can See what happens, suppose that you have a function f, after de de derivative, find, de finding the derivative, you will get another function. Okay, So we can consider this as an operation on a function f to produce another function f dash. Usually some book denote d suffix x to denote a differential operator. The process of differentiation can be written as dx of f equal to f dash or dx f of x equal to f dash of x. We use the notation d by dx. If we denote the dependent variable by y, so that y equal to f of x, then the derivative is, is written as dy by dx. Remember that it is not a fraction, it is a limit. The, now again we can have a value. The value of the derivative of f at a is denoted by f dash of a. If the dependent variable is denoted by a, a letter such as y, then the value of the derivative at a is denoted by dy by dx slash a. Now let us see y equal to root x. Let us see what are the properties. So f of x equal to root x. You know that its domain is left close to 0 infinity. Now we will find dy by dx. dy by dx equal to limit h tends to 0 f of x plus x minus f of x divided by h. That is limit h tends to 0 square root of x plus h minus square root of x divided by h. Now what we we, we will do the rationalization by multiplying square root of x plus h in the num x plus h plus square root of x in the denominator as well as numerator. So we will get limit h tends to 0 square root of x plus h minus square root of x into square root of x plus h plus square root of x divided by h into square root of x plus h into square root of x. That is limit h tends to 0 x plus h minus x divided by h into square root of x plus h plus square root of x. That is limit h tends to 0 h by h into square root of x plus h plus square root of x. That is equal to limit h tends to 0, 1 by square root of x plus h plus square root of x, that is 1 by 2 root x. <coughs> Sorry, remember that its domain is 1 by 2 root x. We can see that domain of dy by dx is 0 infinity. Because x is in the denominator, it will not take the value 0. Now, the rate of change we can see that dy by dx at x equal to 4 is 1 by 4. <coughs> now, let us find a slope. At x equal to 4, we have y equal to 2 and uh, slope is 1 by 4. So, the, uh, it, we, the tangent at, four, uh, at the point 4, 2 is, uh, have the la slope 1 by 4. So, we have the equation, we use the point slope form and we will get the equation as y equal to 1 by 4 x plus 1. So, it is the equation of the tangent line at the point 4, 2. A function is said to be differentiable at a number if it has a derivative at that number. Now, let us find some example. The heavy side function h of t is equal to 0 if t is less than 0 and 1 if t is greater than or equal to 0. We, are, we know that already we have studied in previous class that level left limit at 0 of h of t does not exist. Therefore, limit h tends to 0 minus h of 0 plus h minus h of 0 divided by h when h less than 0 does not exist. That is, h does not have a derivative at 0. Now, we will see what is f of x equal to mod x. We will prove that it is differentiable except at zero. You, you see the graph, you know that the graph of y, of y equal to mod x. So the, see this function is continuous, it's obvious, you can see that. But it has a corner. Now let us find 0 plus h minus f of f of 0 plus h minus f of 0 divided by h. That is f of h minus f of 0 by h. That is mod h minus 0 by h. That is mod h by h. Now if h is greater than 0, then by the definition of modulus, we have mod h is equal to h. Therefore, limit 
h tend to 0 plus mod h by h is equal to limit h tend to 0 plus h by h that is equal to 1. If h is less than 0, then mod h is equal to minus h. Therefore, limit h tend to 0 minus mod h by h is limit h tend to 0 minus minus h by h is equal to minus 1. That means the left and right limit does not exist. Therefore, limit h tend to 0 f of h minus f of 0 by h does not exist. So, the uh, function y equal to mod x is not differentiable at x equal to 0. If f, now, this, this theorem that you have to be keep in your mind throughout your mathematical studies. If f is differentiable at a, then if f is continuous at a, you prove this. Let x be in the domain of a and let us assume that x is not equal to a. Then we can always write f of x minus f of a equal to f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a in x minus a. So, limit x tends to a f of x minus f of a equal to limit x tends to a f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a into x minus a. By using the product of the limits, this is equal limit x tends to a f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a into limit x tends to a x minus a that is equal to f dash of a into 0 that is equal to 0. So, limit x tends to a f of x equal to limit x tends to a f of a plus limit f of x minus f of a f of x minus f of a that is equal to <coughs> limit x tends to a f of a plus limit x tends to a f of x minus f of a that is equal to f of a plus 0 that is equal to f of a therefore continuous. So, remember that every differentiable function is continuous and which is then for every continuous function has a limit also exists. The converse is not true. I hope all of you have followed. If you have any doubt, do ask me through any medium.